guys, my name is Kristen Grunder from Grunderfully Delicious. Thank you so much for signing up for my class. I know I've been away um, from doing online classes for a little while, so I am very excited to be back and I am so excited that you're here. Um, just a real quick rundown of what is in your box. Um, there's a little bag in there that has a practice sheet. We're actually going to practice before we get to our cookies. There's a little piece of parchment in there with a um, skull and circle template that you're going to make royal icing transfers with. This photo you're going to want to have in front of you while you are decorating. It's nice to have a reference in front of you. There's extra piping bags. These are great if you cut your hole too big. Um, you have a little wooden scribe tool, an edible marker, these little edible bats, they're wafer paper bats for our cute little rainbow we're doing, all your cookies as well as your icing. Now when you take your icing out, you're going to want to go ahead and just give it a nice massage. If you notice, there's just a lot of this bulkiness here. So I actually like to cut the bulkiness off, but before you cut, just make sure you don't cut too close to this black tape. I'm going to cut and leave about two inches from the tape. If you cut too close to that tape, what's going to happen is the icing is going to come up the top and your hands will get really, really messy and we do not want that. All right, we're going to go ahead and start practicing on our practice sheet. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut your bag. Now this is the most important part of class, so if you've never cut a piping bag, go ahead and make sure that you're watching. But what I'm going to do is if you look at your bag, there's a seam. I always make sure that seam is pointed up toward the ceiling and centered and then I flatten the tip so it's nice and sturdy. So tip uh, seam is centered, tip is flattened, teeny teeny tiny hole straight across because this is the reason you can always cut more but you can't take it back. So if you cut too big what's going to happen is the ice is going to flow out too fast for you and um, you'll have to rebag, which is why we have those extra bags there. But um, if you cut yours too small, it's very easy to fix. You can just cut a little bit bigger. My goal here is to get my blue icing as thick as this black line. I don't want it much thicker than this. I also don't want it much thinner. If it's too thin, what's going to happen is the icing will start to curl. Now I like to hold my bag by pinching the tape with my thumb and my pointer finger and I roll the pod so it's nice and tight. That tape is there, but it will not prevent the icing from curling up the top. So you wanna always make sure you keep that closed. And then I squeeze with these fingers here. Um, yeah, and I like to hold my wrist steady. So I start by touching my tip on the paper. I squeeze and I lift immediately. As soon as that icing hits the paper, that's when I lift and I'm squeezing just hard enough for that line to not break. Because I'm lifting, I'm gonna release the pressure, lay the line down. Okay, if your line is breaking, that means you're not squeezing hard enough. And if it's squiggly, either you're squeezing too hard or your hole is too big. So again, my tip is touching. I squeeze, I lift. You don't wanna drag your tip on the paper. You want to lift about an inch high. And then again, because I'm lifting, I'm gonna release the pressure, then lay the line down. During this class, what's nice is you can pause any, any, at any point and then um, pick up. So if you want to start on those lines, pause this, and then finish the practice sheet, you can, but we're going to go ahead and keep going. So with the waves and the swirls, I'm still starting by touching my tip on the paper, squeezing just like before, but this time I'm looking a little bit ahead of where I want the icing to fall, and just going even slower, taking my time. When I'm ready to stop, I release the pressure, lay the line down, Give my tip a little swipe. You really want to keep your tip clean. You don't want any crusties on there. Okay. Crusties get in the way. With the swirls, tip is touching just like before. Looking ahead of where I want that icing to fall, making sure to breathe. I'm going to go all the way around, release the pressure when I'm ready to stop, and then lay the rest down. Circles. Circles um, do take a little bit more practice, but my biggest advice here is to go even slower. So I'm looking ahead of where I want that icing to fall. I'm looking at the black line. I'm not actually looking at the tip of my bag or the blue. I'm looking at the black line ahead where I want that to fall. Again, squeezing just hard enough for that line to not break. Release the pressure, lay it down. And with the heart, again, 
Um, what I want to show you here is every point or edge or corner of your cookie, you want to put your tip down. So I have a starting point, I lift up. And the reason we do this is because it will allow us to have nice, sharp edges as well as regain control of that icing. So I'm going to put my tip down right here, okay, and then start where I left off, lifting up again, and then tip back down tip back down and then with the writing we are writing on our cookies today and you'll be able to practice this more um, but we just have a little starting point here with our boo um, I liked again to start with my tip touching and then I lift I'm lifting here following that line still lifting still lifting when I get to this point here my tip goes down okay so I'm lifting again, going around, and my tip goes down. Lifting again, all the way around, and then my tip goes down, lifting, and around, tip down. So the icing that we're going to use for our writing on our cookie is the black icing, and it's actually a little bit thicker than what you're practicing with, so it will be a little bit easier. Uh, but once you're done with your practice sheet, just fold that in half and we'll get started with our cookies. All right, guys, so now that we're done with our practice sheet, we're going to go ahead and get started with our royal icing transfers. And what the royal icing transfers are, um, the little um, bucket or a little pail on the ghost as well as the skeleton, these are little decorations that we make ahead of time that you can make well 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 in advance we let them dry and then we can stick them on our cookies and the reason I like to do these is because one you can make them ahead of time and secondly all of your skulls are gonna look exactly the same all of your um, shapes are gonna look exactly the same and that that's without a um, dehydrator so here we go I have a little clipboard to help because I'm going to put these under a fan once they're to get them to dry but that is not necessary you'll just need to wait a little longer for them to dry but I have a piece of parchment here and I have a little template of our skull and our pumpkin what you're going to do is you're going to outline so go ahead and start massaging your white icing while you're watching me cut your hole super super small this icing is looser it's a thinner consistency than our um, icing that we practice with. So you just wanna cut a touch smaller to start, squeeze that air out. And when I outline this skull, what I'm going to do is hold the parchment paper down and I start by touching my tip right here on this indent of the skull. And then I lift up. It's almost like we're outlining a circle here going all the way around and then my tip goes down right here okay then I'm going to almost drag my tip as I outline the rest of the skull so again I'm dragging my tip here and you're going to want to move the paper over and do your three skulls total so while I show you this I want to show uh, I want to make sure that you know to outline all of these first and then you'll fill them in because what happens is if you outline and then flood outline and then flood you're going to be lifting this up and down I don't want that flood to crack so you're going to outline three skulls and then I'm going to show you how to outline the pumpkin and then we'll start filling them in so my tip touches here and now I'm practically dragging my tip to create this skull shape the skulls are gonna look weird until we actually finish them, just so you know. I'm gonna do the pumpkins right underneath. I'm going to use my light orange, okay? There are two different oranges here. There's a lighter orange and a darker orange, okay? We're going to do the light orange. I repeat, the light orange. So give that a really good massage. The dark orange is for our wet on wet polka dots we're going to be adding on our flags since not everybody has an airbrush machine um, at home but I'm going to go ahead and cut this just a little bit and we'll create our pumpkins okay so the way the way that I do the pumpkin is 
I am going down the circle a little bit and I will kind of curve this to the other side and then I will outline the circle. And I will do this two more times. All right, once those are all outlined, we can start filling them in. So I'm just gonna take this out from underneath and I'm not going to cut the holes of my bags bigger to fill these in, okay? So I'm just going to hold my tip. I'm gonna especially wanna hold this tape closed even more, but I'm gonna hold my tip close to the paper and just gently squeeze. And as I squeeze, I'm kind of pushing the icing up against that outline very carefully that I've made. You don't wanna get these, I mean, you guys have a lot of time to allow these to dry. So if you do wanna really puff these up, you can. But if you are trying to go through this quickly, you want to just fill it enough for the icing to smooth over. You don't want it bumpy, okay? But you want it to be just smoothed over. And you see how I'm kind of using the tip, tip of my bag to kind of jiggle that icing smooth, okay? So I'm just going to, we're only gonna be using two of each here, but I had you guys make an extra just in case any break. And then again with the orange, you're gonna do the same exact thing. So you're just gonna set these aside now to dry. All right, guys, the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to outline your flag cookies. So my tip is touching the cookie and I lift up and I'm going as close to the edge as I can go. And then just like with the heart, we're going to put our tip down here at this point. Then I will start where I left off here. Tip is lifted, tip goes down lifting and then i just messed up oh man it's okay though guys we have this little scribe tool you guys need to just go like that just wipe it off easy peasy so basically just really wanting this icing to close the cookie because this is going to protect that icing from spilling over the edge so don't be worried about it being too perfect but you do have that scribe tool there to help you out if you need it. So I'm lifting, going as close to the cookie as I can go again, and tip goes down. Once both of those are outlined, you are going to go ahead and give this dark orange a massage, a really, really good massage. So we're gonna do what's called a wet on wet technique. In this actual photo, the cookie is airbrushed dots, which I will show you an example of that toward the end of class, but I also want to show you a way to do these dots without having um, an airbrush machine. So what you're going to do is you're going to start filling in this flag. I like to really, really twist the pod so it's nice and tight. And you can cut your hole just a touch bigger if you need to, but I like to kind of keep mine small because we're going to be using this orange to outline our rainbow in a bit. So I'm just keeping it a little bit smaller, but if you need to rebag, you do have those extra bags. But to flood, I'm almost touching my tip on the cookie. Okay, I'm very close to the cookie as I fill this in. And if you'll notice here, I am not gonna be leaving any holes, okay? I want this to be nice and puffy. We are gonna be adding more icing in here with our orange polka dots. So you can leave just a couple little holes, but what I'm gonna do is once that's filled in, 
It will not smooth out on its own. I want to take my scribe tool. You can hold it like a pencil and I kind of jiggle the icing where I want it to go. And once it's all spread out, I give it a little shake, stab and shake. So if you're noticing that the icing is not smoothing over, it could be that you're not adding enough icing in there. But as soon as you're done flooding it, just make sure icing is not spilling over. If it is, it's a very quick and easy fix. You will just swipe it around with your um, scribe tool. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole out of my dark orange and we're going to right away add some dots. So I'm going to kind of hold my tip really close, pretty much on the light orange and kind of make a circle and then fill that in. Okay, so I am just gonna randomly put them on here. So again, my tip is very close to the cookie and I'm just going to, it's not digging in that light orange, but it's just right on top and I'm just filling this in. Now these will sink. This is called the wet on wet technique. As long as you just flooded and you do this right away, those polka dots should sink in. However, if you wait too long to do this, they won't sink in. They'll be kind of on top of the orange, which is fine too. But again, I'm close to that light orange and I'm just making some dark orange dots by holding my tip very close to the cookie and kind of just doing a circular motion until I build that dot. So you'll go ahead and do both of your cookies. At the end of class I am going to show you how to airbrush on that second cookie. All right guys next up we have our ghost. Now when you're outlining your cookies you want to let your outline crust for about a minute. So my tip touches, I lift up. And when you guys are doing this, you're gonna outline both and then go back to your first and start filling it in. So again, going as close to the edge as I can go. And then my tip is going to go down right here at this point. So I lifted my tip throughout that whole thing until I got to that bottom. I'm lifting here. It's kind of wavy. And then my tip goes down. Once that outline has dried, you're going to start filling it in. Now, we can actually cut our white hole bigger here because we don't need the white for anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my hole bigger. This outline has been resting for about a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and cut just a little bit more, just about like that much. Just kidding, don't do that much. Just a little more because again, with flooding, again, you can always adjust it. If you cut too big, you're not gonna be able to control that icing coming out. So you wanna make sure it's big enough to where you can flood quickly, but not too big because you still wanna have control of that icing. So again, I'm holding my tip, almost touching the cookie, holding that tape closed. I like to go around the outside first Royal, royal icing does crust awfully quick, so you want to make sure you're moving pretty fast as you fill this in. If at this point you are needing to use your scribe to kind of spread icing all over, it usually means you didn't add enough icing in there. So you should just be able to give it a little shake and then it should smooth out. Again, before you move on to your next cookie, just make sure icing isn't spilling over Again, the quick fix for that is you're just going to go around and swipe off. See, I had a little bit um, coming off the edge. Next up is going to be our rainbow, and you can use this edible marker here to kind of draw your lines, but I'm going to show you a way that I do it to where I'm not needing to draw any lines. Make sure if any of your icing is separated, squeeze the end of this and give it another massage. Definitely massage your um, purple also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by touching my tip and I'm about a quarter of an inch in because if you look at the photo there's little black dots so I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch around and the way that I do this is I'm looking above at the line of the cookie. Not my blue line, I'm looking at the shape of this 
making sure to leave an even amount all the way around. And then my tip goes down. I'm gonna take my purple next. Again, make sure it's nice and massaged. And you're gonna cut a small hole in that purple as well. And just like with the blue, I'm going to start there and I'm gonna lift and I'm looking at the blue line now, okay? This is how I'm evenly spacing it out. I'm looking at the, the space between the purple and the blue as I go around with my icing. Tip goes back down. Then I'm gonna take my light orange. We are done with the dark orange, so I wouldn't use that one, it's a little too loose, but I'm gonna do an orange line as well. Now I'm looking up at the purple line. If your orange hole is too big, go ahead and just put the icing into a new bag. All right, once I've done that, now I'm gonna close all of these. So I'm lifting, my tip goes down, lifting, tip goes down, and connect. Then I'm going to connect the purple. Again, making sure that you have massaged this because my purple is a little bit loose still. Probably could use a little bit more of a massage. Okay, remember you wanna let these crust for about a minute and then we can start filling them in. I'm not going to cut my blue hole bigger. I'm just gonna keep it this small because we do need that blue at the end. But what you're going to do is you're only going to fill in the blue and the orange. This is the reason why. Um, we want this rainbow to keep its nice curve. And if I find if I flood two colors next to each other right away, they kind of lose their shape. So I am just going to focus on the blue and the orange. Let these crust for about four minutes at least, and then I can fill in the purple and it will really keep its shape. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna fill these in. You wanna make sure they're nice and puffy. So my tip is inserted in here and I'm kind of like puffing the icing up. Okay, it looks full, but then I add a little bit more. Same thing here with the orange. This is the light orange. We're done with that dark orange. You know, it would be cute is adding some polka dots, some dark orange polka dots if you wanted to in the orange section. But I'm really, really puffing this up. While the rainbow, the two sections of the rainbow are drying, we can go ahead and start our ice cream cone. I like to start with the cone section, so my tip touches here, slightly dipping this, and then my tip goes down. Making, ooh, making a little triangle. I'll take my purple, and I'm gonna make sure you guys are watching this because this part is it's not hard but you just definitely have to watch it to see how it's done but I start here my tip is right here I lift and you think I'm gonna go all the way across but I'm not I'm going up to this little bump here and then I can kind of dip this a touch back up okay there's our first line then our second line is going to go up to this little bump here and am I gonna go all the way across? Nope, I'm gonna go up to this point and then down. Definitely replay this if you need to see it again, but I'll just connect the rest. We're gonna wait one minute for this to crust and then we can start filling it in. To fill this in, we'll go ahead and start with our cone and we're gonna do another wet on wet here. We're gonna do some black stripes. So I wanna add those right after I flood this cone right here. 
nice and puffy. Sometimes I just like to jiggle that surface. Then I'm gonna take my black, and I don't want too small of a hole. I want it about what we use to outline our cookies with, but I find if it's too thin of a line that it might curl in the middle of you doing this. So make sure you practice a few lines before you actually go to your cookie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my tip touching that blue, and then I lift up and then my tip releases, and then I touch my tip at the end. So tip touches the blue very gently. I lift, and then my tip goes down. I'm looking at the line below so that I can evenly space this out. But definitely practice a few lines before you do this on your cookie. You wanna make sure that black is coming out nice and even for you. Once you're done with that, you're going to fill in. And right now I can actually cut my purple hole bigger, just a touch. And I'm gonna fill in two sections of the cone. Because if you look at that photo, there's a bit of dimension here. By allowing this to crust, that's how we create that extra dimension. So it doesn't look like just one big blob. It actually looks like it has Kind of texture on it so you'll just fill those ones in all right once those are filled in and your rainbow has crusted for at least four minutes you can actually go and fill in the purple section of your rainbow but again you want to wait that at least four minutes before filling in the purple section but if you notice because we waited that blue is not moving at all, the orange isn't going to move, this rainbow will keep its nice shape that I outlined. Once you've done that, we're still gonna go ahead and just wait for our cone to crust for about four minutes before we fill in the rest. Once this has crusted for about four minutes or so, you can start filling this in. Again, if you have a table fan, you can actually get through these steps a little bit faster. Filling this in and see, see the puffiness of that icing and how allowing those to crust just added so much dimension to this cookie. The first cookie we're going to start our details is going to be the one that we're writing on that says boo. Now um, I would definitely highly recommend you guys practice writing boo um, before you go to your cookie, okay? You want to make sure the hole is the right size. If it is too small, you're going to have issues with it curling. So I start by touching my tip at the bottom of this pendant and I lift up slightly curving this and then I'm going to create my B. I'm still lifting here, still lifting, still lifting until I get right here. Now my tip is touching, lift, and then my tip touches again, lift, and tip goes down. And then I will create my little explanation mark. You want to make sure your cookies are dry before adding any sort of detail to these. We're going to finish our rainbow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my tip and I'm going to go right in between the two colors. Again, making sure your hole isn't too small before you go on to your cookie right in between the two colors 
and then my tip goes down all the way around not too much pressure I want to still have control of this line then I'm also going to add a little dot. So my tip touches, I squeeze, squeeze, squeeze until I get the size dot that I want. Squeeze, squeeze, release the pressure, then I lift. If you don't release that pressure early, um, before you lift, you're going to get a pointy circle. Also, if you're not really just close to this cookie when you start to make your dot, you're not going to get a nice round dot. So my tip is touching, I squeeze, squeeze, release, then lift. Once those dots are added, you're going to add your little bats. And so these are edible bats. They're from a company called The Cookie Monger. And these are made from wafer paper. So what I like to do first is just kind of make a little dot, teeny tiny dot, where I want to add these. So I'm going to add three on each cookie. I like to pick this up and kind of fold in the wings a little bit, kind of just curve them a touch and then I will just gently put them on that dot that I've made and you can take your scribe and just gently press it down so again curving these and then setting them on that dot your second finished cookie. So now we're going to go ahead and bring our little transfers out. Now you want to make sure these are crusted before you do anything with them. Again, a fan will help crust them quicker, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put my pointer finger underneath the skull very gently and peel off the sides, okay? Very, very gently peel that off. And then you can carefully take the scribe and kind of pull this off. But you notice it's still really wet. So you wanna make sure that you've waited a decent amount of time to take those off. If your first one cracks, hold off on adding it. But what I'm gonna do is a little dot here. And then I'm gonna take my skull and just gently slide it on this cookie. And I can use my scribe to kind of move this around gently. Since you're doing these at home, you really can um, wait longer between steps than if you were in, at an in-person class. Once that is done, you can add the little face. So I like to hold my tip close to the cookie and I'm just squeezing, kind of doing a slanted like oval. Okay, and then the little nose is just an upside down heart. So I go up and then I go down. And there's your next finished cookie. Here's the last cookie we're going to finish, which is our little ghost. The first thing I'm going to do is add the eyes. And what I like to do is kind of do a teeny tiny little dot of where I want my eye. And that way, if I place it a little too far to the right or the left, I when I do the bigger eye, I can kind of move it around or place it a little bit um, closer to where I want it. So once I've done the little dots, I like that placement, so I'm going to touch my tip squeeze 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 making a little dot squeeze 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 until I'm happy with the size of the eye I like to make a little highlight here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my white off and kind of just touch my tip to that black 
Now you can wait like a couple hours and use this marker here to add a teeny tiny little smile. You can add lashes, um, but you have to wait for this to crust more. But I'm gonna go ahead and just use the black icing to make a smile, holding my tip close, almost dragging it on there. Then I'm going to take my bow or my blue and make a bow. I'm touching my tip here. I'm lifting, creating a loop, and then another loop. I lifted the whole time. And then from here, I'm gonna go up and down. Now you can practice this little bow first, so make sure that your hole is the right size. Make sure you massage that really well. Uh, I'm gonna take my little pumpkin and just sort of peel this off. If you're very, very gentle, you can kind of pull it off just like that. Add my little dot where I want to add this pumpkin. Let's see if I can do it without cracking. Okay, so we're just gonna place that there, maybe a little more gently than I did. And kind of scooch it around. You don't want to press hard on this. You just kind of want to place it on there. Um, forgot to add cheeks on her. She needs some purple cheeks. So let's go ahead and add that little dot right here. She needs little hands to hold the pumpkin. So tip is close to the cookie. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze until I get that size dot that I want. Then I'm going to create a little handle using my black. The little pumpkin gets a face as well. And then we're going to make little dots in here. Now my suggestion is to start with one color and not have these dots touch each other. Then you can wait a minute and add some more dots. The reason why you want to wait a minute because you'll see these are going to kind of run into each other but if you wait one minute and then add the blue dots they won't run into each other the very last step of this set is i'm going to take my light orange and add just a little dot right here and there we've got our finished ghost so cute Now I'm gonna show you how to airbrush. In case you have an airbrush at home or are looking to purchase one, I'm using what's called the Cookie Countess Airbrush. I have these available in my shop. They, um, they are a little different now. This is an older version. But what I'm going to do is take my little stencil. We use a little polka dot one, and this is what's called a stencil genie. I'm going to place the stencil right into there and put this other piece on top so it's basically magnets it's going to hold that stencil in place and i'm just going to gently set this on my cookie this is americolor airbrush color that i'm using i'm using orange here electric orange and this is our airbrush gun. So I just turned the on button there. I'm going to fill this just a little bit with about three drops in here. And the way that I use the airbrush is I hold this pretty much straight up and down and then gently pull up on the trigger. If you pull up too far, the, the color is going to come out too fast. So I just very, very gentle and I go back and forth back and forth. I'll go one more time. And you want to, I like to do light layers. Otherwise the color will kind of start to pool under the stencil and you're not going to get that really nice clean look on the cookie. I'm going to lift this up gently and there is our polka dots by using the airbrush. Let's go ahead and write boo on there. Again. I love using the airbrush for stuff like this. It just adds extra cuteness to the cookie. But as you can see, you did 
um, do that wet on wet polka dot. So it's pretty much looks very similar to each other. I'll hold them up next to each other. Doink. There we go. So there's the airbrushed one and this is the wet on wet one. So pretty similar to each other, but yeah. So I just wanted to hop on here real quick and just say thank you again so much for signing up. I hope you enjoyed the class. Please email me if you have any questions at all, but I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. Bye.